Welcome back! Theme Park Wizard, we're here on yet another history video since the Thunder Mountain one was so successful. This one, this time we're talking about another classic attraction, Indiana Jones Adventure. So Indiana Jones Adventure came on, was the idea was brought upon by the success of the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular show at Hollywood Studios in Florida. That, of course, is just a stunt show, no actual attraction, but they, they were so popular over there that they decided, they decided, let's make a brand new e-ticket attraction for Disneyland's Adventureland based on Indiana Jones. And of course, if I do it correctly, yeah, I didn't have George Lucas involved, so they, inclu they included George Lucas, which they previously included for Star Tours, Captain EO, among other attractions. And early concept, uh, when they're doing the design for this ride, early concepts included a walkthrough attraction. It's funny how most things start off as a, or some things start off as a walkthrough, like Pirates of the Caribbean was originally a walkthrough attraction. So it's funny how early concepts um, started off, again, with a, with a walkthrough here as well. Or a high-speed mine train coaster. A mine cart coaster would be like a, something like a, a, a better version of what you see in Paris and in Tokyo with the Raging Spears attractions. Other early concepts included using the Jungle Cruise boats to access the key to avoid long lines. Now this, I'll do a separate video on this and definitely subscribe below for um, if you are interested in that. But this was a massive Indiana Jones Miniland concept. It contained one large show building, and it would have the Jungle Cruise, and then it would have Indiana Jones. So, the Jungle Cruise would be mostly outdoor like it is now, but then a good chunk of it would be indoors, and that's when it goes through, it goes through the temple, and that's when you'd be, you'd be able to get off if you want to, and get to Indiana Jones. So, the Jungle Cruise would essentially be half an attraction but also part part transportation attraction ride as well as you need to get to Indiana Jones and in this big warehouse or this big show opening not only would they have Indiana Jones adventure the one you see, see today with the enhanced motion vehicles but they'd also have the minecart coasters like Raging Spears, but an indoor version of Raging Spears, and hopefully it with a better track layout and longer. And they'd all be going above and uh, beneath, below each other. It'd be a massive, immersive Indiana Jones mini land. And again, I'll get to that one in a separate video. So there's a whole story on that. So definitely subscribe for that. But due to uh, budgets, <laughs> that concept was didn't happen but parts of it did as you see because again the raging uh, spirits coasters in tokyo and paris were part of that concept and they just made it separately and indiana jones adventure itself in tokyo made it they just aren't combined together and of course the jungle cruise which is already here the team tested key show elements in a big burbank warehouse of just the uh the, the attraction we know today, the Enhanced Motion Vehicle attraction, and they used a full-size elevated track that resembled a freeway. And this enabled team, the team to test set pieces, lighting effects, transport clearances, and motion profiles. Can you imagine that? A massive freeway type elevated track. You just have this massive Jeep, uh, Enhanced Motion Vehicle Jeep um, testing on a ride. That's pretty awesome. So, now let's go through the timeline of what eventually the attraction we know came today. All right, so when they got the design and all that good stuff tested out, and the they got their team of Imagineers, they said, "All right, I'm ready to break ground on this attraction." And that groundbreaking occurred in August 1993 with a team of 400 Imagineers. Those 400 Imagineers were working on design and construction, but Tony Paxton himself took a core team of 100 Imagineers, which is still a lot of Imagineers, and they really um, hammered down the design, hammered down the details, hammered down the queue. 
And speaking of the queue, the queue is a half of a mile long. It's one of the longest, if not the longest, in the Disneyland Resort. So if you're ever wondering why you're in the Indiana Jones queue and you're like, oh my gosh, we're still not at the ride. Now the temple is like basically the halfway point. Well, that's because the queue is a half mile long and it required partial demo of the Eeyore lot as well as a rerouting of the monorail and jungle queue. So it was a massive, massive project. Also, the queue goes under the railroad tracks. As the Indiana Jones showboating is under the railroad tracks, and you can see it actually from the tram loading area and downtown Di in downtown Disney, and kind of the espionage, it's that big kind of bluish show building, that's the Indiana Jones showboating. So it acts as that. You go in the temple, you go under the railroad tracks, and then you start the indoor portion of the queue. So it makes it extra long. So it is quite the queue, but it can hold quite a lot of people. And even with that long queue, on opening day, it was still seven hours long with the queue stretching all the way to Main Street. So the half mile, half mile queue certainly wasn't enough. <laughs> and sometimes still isn't. And 19, uh, November 16, 1995, just a few months before opening of the attraction, Disney filed a patent for the ride, including the name and the um, Vehicle system, the enhanced, mo the enhanced motion vehicle system, so no one other else can use that, right? And they really want to make this a star studded, star studded event and as realistic as possible, so they wanted Harrison Ford, of course, Mr. Indiana Jones himself, to reprise his role with the, the lines for the animatronic. But somewhere along the line, negoti negotiations broke down and Ford did not reprise his role. So the animatronics were eventually voiced by Dave Temple, which I admit he has a pretty pretty darn good job because if I didn't know that I actually just found that out during this research research for the video. But I really thought that was Harrison Ford the entire time. The ride opened on March 3rd, 1995, just a month before my birthday. Uh, it's not April 30th, and I was born in 1996, so I was super close. With multiple celebs, including Carrie Fisher and some other hot hot celebs at the time attending the ride premiere and again on uh, March 4th the ride opened to the general public with that seven hour line up to Main Street that I was talking about and keep in mind that's a regular line imagine if it was during this time it's a socially distanced seven hour line or that thing would wrap around back and forth and make switchbacks on Main Street all the way to Tomorrowland <laughs> But as part of the promotion of the ride, Disney Channel promoted the ride with a half hour special called Indiana Jones Adventure. Uh, probably touting the ride and they even had uh, some of the actors from the Raiders of, Lost, of the Lost Ark come in there and promote the ride as well. 40 days prior to the attraction's opening, Disney continued with their promotion with 40 years of adventure giveaway which included 40 unique annual trading cards. Guests with a valid paid admission received a voucher at the main gate turnstile to exchange for the card for the day, each in a series featuring the landmark attraction of the year starting with 19. Uh, each in a series featuring a landmark attraction and a Disneyland Resort starting with 1955. Last card was distributed on March 2nd. And something else I found out researching this attraction was ATT sponsored the construction of the attraction. Um, in the first seven years of operation, from 1995 to 2002. After that, sponsorship ended, and Disney guests didn't need them anymore. So you don't see any, you don't see any Indiana Jones adventure sponsored by AT&T, which is good. I'm glad Disney kind of ends their sponsorships because that looks kind of too six flagsy for me. And one of the three styles of these Maribic Dakota cars was distributed to each guest with yet another promotional campaign and they have these letters and they have little messages and they still have them throughout the queue today and these little messages they can like form words and you can decode hidden messages throughout the half mile queue while you're waiting in line and again they still have those today and if you don't have the original card the Disney uh, Parks Play app has um, kind of brought those cards back but digitally and you can play games decoding those messages in the queue when Disneyland reopens in 2021, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that was the history 
of from groundbreaking from design to opening of the Indiana Jones Adventure, a classic attraction, def and definitely one of my favorites and everyone else's favorites as well. Definitely top five attraction. Like this video if Indiana Jones is one of your favorites, and subscribe to the channel for more Disneyland and other theme park attraction history. You can always com comment below what type of attractions you'd like to me to do the history on. I'll link my Big Thunder Mountain history in the top right corner. Um, that was a very popular one, so that's why I decided to do this one. But yeah, let me know what other attractions, Disney or not Disney, you'd like me to see. Like me to do the attraction history on. And as always, have a fantastic day.